Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren. And I'm Laurel and Tyler Thompson. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. It's a great day to be with you. We have a powerful Faith Forward segment later in the show about trying again, and it will definitely motivate and encourage you. Hmm. Well, you know, we have had some lessons uh, from in our lives, both of us, from trying again, mm -hmm. not giving up. You know, you face a disappointment and you keep on going. Well, you know, one of the things that I, I, I laugh about is life, I feel, is like a tsunami. It's not like a wave that kind of goes to a place and then it goes back. Right. But it's kind of like a wave on top of a wave on <laughs> top of a wave. Oh. And if you learn, you could actually hold the position right. and just stay in your bathing and suit surf it. and just wait for the next wave to come. You can surf it. You can hang oh, tin. That's you, a different way. Well, you know, I learned this and I guess yeah. I guess learning from athletics and also the different things that I've mm. done in business mm. that no one's good at anything when you first start. Mm. But it's a process and you get more uh you, you get more proficient as you move along. I think what we try, and this is where I, I know a lot of people struggle, and you can't have this, especially with what we do in front of people and television and everything else. You cannot be self-conscious. Because right. as soon as you start becoming self-conscious, it's the death knell. Because right. you you now start thinking more about yourself Self. and you make it about you instead right. of about really what mm -hmm. the, the purpose is of what you're doing. That's true. And if we actually put our eyes on him and well, that's get it off of ourselves and our circumstances, that's when we can have peace in the storm. And that's when you start doing the tightrope walking. You could be yeah. like one of the, the crazy Walendas going <laughs> across, you know, Niagara Falls or Ooh, something like that. I don't know. Because I found, well, you know, once you've done it and that repetition, yeah. repetition, repetition kicks in, mm. the next thing that happens is as soon as the light comes on, as right. soon as it's action time, now you're not thinking about, well, what if I do this? What if I do that? Now you're just saying, you know mm. what? I remember we've been here before. Okay, it's like riding a bike. Let's just right. do this thing. Let's do this thing. Well, I was talking to somebody in the studio earlier today about how suffering, the word says suffering produces perseverance. Yes. So when we're suffering through the trial, yes. we're actually in training That's to right. be able to persevere. 100%. And the next time that that tsunami wave hits, yes. we're, we're better able to handle it. You're more mature. You yeah. You understand? You're like, Hakuda Matata. Right. You find out God took care of it last time, he'll take care of it today. He's the same. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And we're excited to share some stories from some little people. Today you'll meet children whose lives were totally transformed through Superbook. Superbook is an incredible series of animated Bible stories and a wonderful resource to have for your kids or grandkids. Here's a story of how Superbook made a difference in the life of one 10-year-old girl in Albania. Mm. Take a look. When I was five or six years old, I watched Superbook for the first time. Ten-year-old Enia found a hero in her favorite cartoon series. I am thinking all the time, why can't I become like Joy? She believes in God and she is good and kind. I began to believe and I started to pray. This cartoon changed the life of my daughter. The story of Esther when Joy makes friends with children that others have rejected, it had a strong impact on Anya. Joy in the cartoon walks with a girl named Bonnie who uses a wheelchair. I thought if Joy can be so kind and brave, so can I. So Anya befriended a child at school who had been bullied by classmates. I found out that she was a nice person and I realized that all people need to be given a chance. Enia is one of the thousands of children across Albania whose lives have been changed through CBN Superbook. Albanian missionary Rachel Byler has witnessed the influence of Superbook firsthand. We love the show Superbook in Albania because wherever we go, and this is true, wherever we go, uh, the kids have all know the song, and it's the song of salvation. This cartoon is very important for our country because so many children are in families who don't know Jesus. But now they know Gizmo, Joy and Chris, and they hear about God through them. Now I talk to my friends about Jesus. Thank you to everyone who made the wonderful Superbook. 
Did you know that according to research, 85% of people who accept Jesus do so between the ages of 4 and 14? That's why we believe in Superbook as a tool to help teach children about the Bible and about Jesus at a young age. Mm -hmm. And if you're inspired to join our Superbook DVD club, call us today at 1-855-759-0700. For just $25 a month, you'll receive three DVDs. You can keep one and give the others away. Mm -hmm. You can be a part of how Superbook is impacting and changing the lives of children all over the world. Mm. You know, when I look at Ania, I find that uh, she looked at Joy and she, she sees Chris and Gizmo and she says, I want to be a better person as well. Right. And this song is really catchy because you talk about the salvation song. Mm -hmm. Children in all these different mm -hmm. languages are coming to Christ and also right. coming to a deeper knowledge of their faith by looking at this powerful animation mm. and this tool that is really giving mm. them an opportunity to express it in their own age and in their own, mm. uh, you know, in that age group. It is absolutely the strength of Superbook is that it yeah. is speaking the language of a child. It's colorful. They have invested so much into making this uh, something that can compete with what yeah. they're seeing in the world because we know that kids have high standards now because of you know what they're seeing in movies and and the the different TV shows that are being produced there's a yeah. lot of funds that go into that and what i appreciate is that we have invested in superbook so that our kids are getting top notch you know training on yeah. what the bible has to say it's but great i love what the mom said this is changing the life of my child yes and that's what uh, that's music to uh, to every any parent. parents yeah. <laughs> ears well <gasps> You know, after the break, God used Superbook also to change a boy's heart. Mm, great story. Inside every child is a hero, a leader, a friend to others, someone who helps out, who does the right thing, who dreams of what they can be but they still need our help. What should I do? What should I say? How should I feel? That's where Superbook comes in. It provides moral and spiritual truths through situations children can relate to, teaching God's word to the children you love. Join the Superbook DVD Club and receive Superbook's newest episodes as they're available, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Get Superbook today and watch the miracles happen. Graham is a Sunday school teacher in Indonesia. Recently, he was preparing his first lesson using CBN's new Superbook curriculum. When it came time to preview the episode in the beginning, he invited his son Richard and daughter Thea to watch with him. The Superbook story was about Adam and Eve. The snake tricked Eve and she ate the fruit. They sinned against God. I had never seen Superbook before. I noticed how my son was engaged in the story. Bram was excited about how his Sunday school kids would react to the lesson too. When they watch Superbook, they really focus on the story. The Superbook curriculum was great too. It came with lessons, schedules, and activities. What Bram didn't expect was how Superbook would make an impact on his son that same day. As the six-year-old re-watched the Adam and Eve episode, he confessed something to his dad. I told him I was the one who dropped my little sister's plate. Richard had lied earlier and blamed his little sister for the broken plate. Right in the middle of the Superbook story, he said, Daddy, I was the one who did it. I was amazed. Richard apologized to his sister, then he prayed and asked Jesus to forgive him. His voice was shaking. I'd never seen him pray so seriously before. After I prayed with Daddy, I felt better. Bram was curious why his son had confessed during the Superbook episode. Richard told me he didn't want to be tricked by the serpent, like Adam and Eve. I was surprised and proud of him at the same time. 
As for Richard, his dad says he still can't get over how a single animated cartoon made such an impact on a six-year-old boy. God used Superbook to change my son's heart. Superbook is amazing. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that is a pretty good deal as a parent that you get to just put your kids in front of Superbook and they just start confessing everything that they've done. It's awesome. You know, Superbook is amazing because not only does it bring to life all of these incredible uh, historical stories that uh, are in the Word of God, you know, um, I remember reading, you know, for many hours when my kids were young. And of course, you don't want to take away reading, but it's so amazing to see David, you know, uh, take out Goliath and all of the, the stories like Esther and so many that are in there that really teach kids about what really happened and how God came through for people time and time again. It instills faith in your kids and not to mention it teaches them you know about getting rid of some of that guilt because they know that they've been untruthful in a certain situation this is what superbook does it teaches about principles and about uh, godly standards that we want our kids to live by i wonder if you're dealing with any guilt in your life as an adult we have some help for that and all you have to do is uh, give us a call i do truly understand what it's like to feel guilty inside and to feel full of shame. That was my life for a few years. I had made some mistakes and I felt that guilt. I felt that shame deeply. And I needed something that would help me to get through. And I am so grateful that the Word of God, it has everything that you need. Give us a call, one 855 Seven five nine zero seven hundred. We'd love to send that out to you today. Well, coming up, a young preacher's kid resolves his anger issues with God. You do not want to miss this. A assault with a deadly weapon charge and it wasn't because I grabbed a gun or something that was a fit of rage kid poor kid did nothing to me Juan Mancias was 15 when he nearly killed another teenager with his bare hands his anger began when he was a young boy and in the most unlikely place the church where his father and grandfather were pastors so I feel like every single time I went to church I was walking into a courtroom and why would I want to go through that? Juan stopped going to church. The source of that anger was never feeling good enough for God. And if I'm not going to feel the love or if I'm going to be judged, then I'm going to act out. I took it out in fights. I took it out in just breaking stuff. After the assault charge, his father persuaded Juan, already a skilled baseball player, to take up boxing as a way to channel his anger. Every person that made me mad at school or a teacher, I took it out in the boxing gym. Juan's boxing coach was a Christian, and every workout came with a Bible lesson. One day, Juan took a blow to the head. I told my dad my leg felt funny. I blacked out at that point. From that on, I don't remember. Juan suffered a subarachnoid hemorrhage, a brain bleed, and was rushed to a hospital where he underwent emergency surgery. The doctors told his parents he may never wake up. And if he did, he had only a 30% chance of living a normal life. He said, I'm going to give your son 12 hours. After 12 hours, I'm going to give him three days. After three days, we're going to have to see what you want us to do. I couldn't comprehend it. I couldn't think. I was in, kind of in shock myself. When he told us that, my wife looked at me and she goes, you need to pray. So that's when I went into the, to the extended waiting room and I just cried out to the Lord. Johnny and his wife Helen stayed at their son's bedside, praying through the night. So right now we're not going by what the doctors tell us, we're going by what God says. I started playing nothing but worship music inside his room during the nighttime. The very next morning, Juan woke up. 
at that time, it was like God was just assuring us that everything was gonna be okay. After the first week, I seen the turnaround, and on the sixth day, he started telling me he wanted to walk, and I seen that's when I knew that everything was going to be okay. I knew that God's hand was in it. The path back for Juan wasn't easy. We had to teach him how to eat again, and we had to teach him how to drink again. We had to teach him how to use a straw, how to read, how to spell his name. But I knew that God's hand was in it because it just happened. He, he did so good. Juan regained most of his brain function within a matter of weeks. But instead of being grateful to be alive, he was angry. That day they told me I can't box, I can't play baseball. And when it got real to me, I hated God because I felt like he took everything away from me. As Juan's body continued to heal, his father prayed that God would heal his heart as well. One evening, he talked Juan into going to hear an evangelist at a youth camp service. I was just praying, Lord, please speak to my son because he's not listening to me anymore. I had my eyes closed and I was still praying. And when I seen him get up, I got up and followed him. And so they prayed for him and it was like the Lord just took over. I was so mad at God and all he was trying to do was give me a hug. That's when I gave up. I was like, I'm done fighting, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna win. I couldn't move, I, I felt paralyzed. They prayed for me and then all of a sudden, I felt peace. I really feel like I had a spirit of anger in me. That night, I felt like it came out. And that's when I knew God loved me. Juan surrendered his life to Christ that night. You ever fish for bass? They fight, they fight, they fight, but your job is to keep them on the line. Let them fight till they get tired. Like, God let me fight, he let me hate on him but I always stayed on his line. And now I feel like he reeled me in. The accident, I don't see it as taking stuff away anymore because it gave me an opportunity to touch more lives than I could ever do. Today, Juan has returned to both the boxing ring and the baseball field. But most importantly, he sees God in a brand new light. I don't see God as a judging God. I see God as a merciful, loving God. I see him as a father who wants his kids to be safe. He doesn't walk away from us. We walk away from him, and he's, he's waiting there. God loves you, and he's just waiting for you to come back home. Juan fought God most of his life, and he, I love the way he said, you know, it's like a bass fish. You get him on the end of the line, and he just keeps fighting, fighting, fighting until he gets into the boat. I wonder if you've been that fighter, and every time God is trying to do something in your life, you just keep fighting and fighting and fighting. You know, I've discovered uh, anger is a very interesting emotion because what it does do is it doesn't necessarily just blow up at everyone else, but it hurts the one that has the anger more than anyone else. Because oftentimes what ends up happening is because you're passionate, you find yourself moving into places and, and expressing your passion in an unproductive way. I know that myself. I played professional football for 12 years, and I remember at the end of that, I had to ask God, would you please take this out of me? Because I knew it was something that I could not in my own strength control. Am I talking to you? I believe that God has something for you, and it's called overcoming anger. I want to get this into your hands. And it's not just men. It's not just children, but women as well. You see, whether we swallow our anger and our stomach keeps the score or we just blurt out and become nuclear because of small issues, it's still anger. But if you'll surrender it, God can turn it into passion and compassion when you come on to him. Just like Juan, let's pray with God right now. Pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I cannot control this fuse any longer. I surrender. I turn my emotions over to you. Lord, would you please direct and guide my life? 
Make me the person you want me to be. I confess my sin. You said, be angry and sin not. I have sinned in my anger. I confess it, I turn from it, and I turn to you. And I ask for your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, call the number on the screen because you're gonna have powerful living today and you're gonna overcome that. But you're gonna be more than an overcomer. You're going to be a conqueror in Christ Jesus. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. Yay! This is a great day for you. Well, after the break, Laura Lynn reminds us to try again in her Faith Forward segment. It's powerful. You don't want to miss it. exhausted lately doing what you know to do and having no tangible results it's a perfect setup for a miracle Peter Jesus disciple he had been fishing all night just doing what he knew to do and caught no fish Jesus told him to cast his nets one more time and prepare for a great haul Peter must have wondered why Jesus would ask him to do the very thing that he had been doing over and over with no success any of you going through something like that? In Luke 5, 5, it says, Simon Peter answered, Master, we've toiled all night. We're exhausted. We've caught nothing in our nets. But on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets again. I wonder if you would dare to try one more time on the ground of his word. In faith, believing that when God tells you to cast your net just one more time, that it's going to be a jaw-dropping haul. Perhaps it was only sheer faith that made Peter try one last time. Faith in who Jesus was and not in his circumstances. Faith in the one who had healed the sick and made crazy people sane again. Peter decided to take a risk based on what he knew to be true about Jesus even though he had years of experience in fishing and knew that they just weren't biting that night. He had faith in something outside of the normal circumstances of life. In verse 6 to 9, it says, And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And as their nets were at the point of breaking, they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and take hold with them. And they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. You see, Peter was shocked. He'd had an incredible reaction to this. And you know what he did? He, he went over to where Jesus was and he fell down at Jesus' feet. And, and he said, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he was gripped with what the word says is bewildering amazement. And all who were with him were amazed at the haul of fish that they had made. It happens to all of us. When we see what God does with our obedient hearts in the midst of our needy circumstances, we also see how far we will fall short of deserving his intervention in our circumstances. God is a specialist at inspiring, as this passage calls it, bewildering amazement at what he is capable of. We can't help but bow in worship at what God can do with one sinner's destiny. I pray today that you would move on the ground of God's word alone and that you too would be gripped with bewildering amazement at the outcome of mankind's weakness and, and our failure turning into God's miraculous provision. That's our God. Don't get tired of doing the right thing because God is designing a miracle harvest in the face of your obedience at his word. Kids, we want them to grow up knowing God's word, but in today's busy world, sometimes we could use some help. The free Superbook Kids Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, Discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available on iTunes and the Google Play Store.
Laura Lynn, I really love Superbook and yes. what it's doing. It is, mm -hmm. is one of those tools that it really allows you to, uh, in a very practical way, mm -hmm. help kids understand the complexity of salvation. Well, yes, and it simplifies it down so that they can understand it. And, you know, kids are, um, they are our greatest, greatest treasure. Mm -hmm. And when you want to invest in, in helping your child to really know who Jesus is, yes. this is so easy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's so simple. Um, and... Uh, you know, investing in this and, and making this part of your family sort of routine, sitting down at night. I've heard some parents, yeah. you know, after dinner, everybody's kind of getting ready, you know, calming yes. down for the night, and you sit and watch a super book together. And I've heard that some parents are pretty impressed. Well, you know what? <laughs> and they like the stories. <laughs> Not surprising, but yeah. uh, we've got some comments, some Superbook comments. And uh, Merle from North York says, my grandson loves Superbook stories. And Fred from Coquitlam, B.C., my neck of the woods, says, mm -hmm. uh, friend sends a copy of Superbook to missionary friends in Nicaragua. Wow, the children mm -hmm. love watching it, and so do the adults, like I just said. You know, part of leading young people to the Lord is making it very simple and mm -hmm. helping them understand what heaven is from a, a young person's perspective. Uh, in my church, we use Superbook, and a lot of the kids use it as their Bible devotional in the morning. Wow. So it, they watch Chris and Joy and yeah. Gizmo, and they ask the questions, what do you learn about that? So they can mm -hmm. practice that throughout the rest of the day. Right. And then after that, at the end, it says, do you want to be a better person? Mm -hmm. Do you want Jesus in your heart? And that's when the child gets an opportunity to say yes, yeah. and they, they pray that song. Well, I like your idea, because a lot of kids are eating breakfast sometimes in of the TV before school. That's right. Why not be playing Superbook? You got it. Perfect. Hey, we've had a wonderful time with you, and we want to leave you with a power verse as well. And this is it. Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise, Jeremiah 17, 4. Till next time. Keep praying. Bye for now. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram. On the next 700 Club Canada. A year later, Dana fell prey to another abuser. Afterwards, I felt great guilt and shame. It was the huge shift in my heart. It's when my world really like turned upside down.